Dark Season 3 is mostly in German, and I will come back to that. And if you're somehow not aware, Dark is one of the most popular non-English language series to date. Now, I will just say that I am about to give general concept spoilers for Seasons 1 and 2, but I will not be giving spoilers for Season 3 until later on, but when I do, I will give you fair warning of that. However, if you're here and you've never seen any of Dark, my recommendation is to go and watch Season 1, and then just forget the rest of it ever happened. It's not that it's really bad, it's just it didn't need to be. Season 1 was the glory days. Go and watch it. The Reykjavik Review is all about films and series that are not in English, so obviously Dark fits into that category. However, I never reviewed Season 1 because this channel didn't exist back then, and I never reviewed Season 2 because a certain moment in Season 2 was so ridiculously childish and infuriating that I found I could not craft a review about a series that a number of writers had put their sweat and tears into, only to have a Netflix producer walk in and say, oh, and if you want to be paid for that season, make sure that the last 10 seconds of it undermines everything that you've written thus far. I couldn't in good conscience write that review. It felt like trying to give a student a bad report card the day after they'd been hit by a car. And that's where season 3 picks up, 10 seconds after the entire premise of the show was thrown to the dogs. But that didn't mean that season 3 was always going to be bad. I want to be very clear about this. People who tried to tell me how lit the end of Season 2 was thought that I would somehow have to eat my words if Season 3 turned out to be amazing. Das ist falsch. If the first time you meet a man, he does a three-minute burnout in his Lamborghini on your front lawn and your wife's rose garden, and then he turns out to be a nice bloke, does that suddenly make the burnout in the Lamborghini a worthy and excellent act? No. That just means he's a nice guy who did a dickhead thing. The end of Season 2 was that dickhead thing. It didn't bode well for Season 3, but it didn't make it irreparable. However, if you were putting your money on an amazing Season 3 somehow making me look like a fool, pay up, bitch! Season 3 was overall weak, and most of its weakness stemmed directly from trying to justify that horror of a season bait that was the end of season 2. But it's not all bad news, I do want to talk about some things that they did well, such as the cinematography. Dark has an unusually straight way with the camera. There are hardly any Dutch angles or overheads. Most things are shown to you in a neutral manner, which is very fitting and quite subtle. It's appropriate to support the idea that we're witness to a kind of playing out of fate. The camera is not a character, the viewer ought not to be involved. As well as that, there's a growing sense of foreboding in Part 3. We start to get used to the idea that none of this can ever be stopped, we're just in this hopeless cycle, and the elements of filmmaking are used to drive home this feeling of desperation, as if we're moving further away from a happy return to normal, rather than closer. It's quite deliberate and it's very powerful, although I will say that at times it feels more just plain depressing rather than properly interesting. There is a mild excitement at some moments, nowhere near Season 1 of course, but it's not completely devoid of interest. Some moments are really well made and convey the tension that was needed. And I'll talk more about this later when I get into spoilers, but for now, the conclusion, although I wasn't really happy with it, when I think about some of the alternative directions that they could have gone, things that they could have done to wrap this plot up, I guess this conclusion was okay. Now we're going to get into some problems with Season 3, and there's quite a bit to talk about here. Most of them stem from one umbrella problem, which is that, a bit like Richard Dawkins, this entire thing exists in order to justify its own existence. There would be no Season 3 if there hadn't have been the bait for Season 3. So what we get here is mostly eight episodes trying to justify a producer's financial decision. It reminds me quite a bit of Nathaniel Drew's 14 minute long loving gaze into the mirror in which he justifies misleading the public when he could have just said, did it for the views, sorry. My point here is that it's difficult to pinpoint the origins of the problems with Season 3. Did this problem originate within itself? Is it contained to itself? Is it part of a bigger problem? Is it all just part of the same problem? And yes, I am going to come back to the meta-nature of that. 
Basically, from a writing point of view, this season is a mess. I don't mean scientifically. Obviously, parallel universes and time traveling is going to be messy from a scientific standpoint, it always is. But season one showed us that from a script perspective, time travel could be extremely tight. What was so engaging about the first season of Dark was that this stuff that didn't seem like it could be possible later turned out to be the only possible explanation. There was a lot of thrust in that idea and it was enough to propel us right through season one and quite a bit of the way through season two as well. But by this season, it's kind of fizzled out and it feels extremely repetitive. There's also no ongoing feeling of suspense. Like I said, a few moments were exciting, but they were confined to few and far between scenes. There was no build-up of tension. It would get exciting for a moment, and then it would just drop back to where it had been. It proved a little too much for these writers to try to generate ongoing suspense when everything plot-wise has already happened, or if it hasn't happened yet, then the results of that event have happened. So it felt a little bit like watching a fixed sports match. Okay, so from here we will be getting into some spoilers for Season 3, so if you haven't seen Season 3 and you've liked this so far, remember to subscribe, go and watch Season 3 and come back when you're done. It feels like there are a lot of things that don't ever get explained or don't get adequately explained. For example, there is this sense that the older versions of each character know more than the younger versions of themselves about how this all works, which makes sense, but it never gets clearly shown that the reason the cycle varies every time is that the older versions tell the younger versions what they've learned in order to save them from having to learn it again. In the same way that mankind has advanced so far because of our ability to store and pass on information to the next generation in order to save them from having to do the same research, it follows that this is how the characters could eventually reach the critical information that can get them out of all this. But it's very vague considering that this show is almost entirely dialogue. It's not as if they don't have room to bring it up. In this fashion, there are also characters who seem to kind of magically know things. Adam somehow figures out that if Jonas and Otherworld Marta are at a very specific place at a very specific time, then they can access a world previously non-accessible, that is, the origin world. Like, okay, technically it's probably skimmed over as to where he got this information, but even then, how? I mean, this is like a massive life and death, is there a god kind of a question, and he seems to just sort of stumble upon this information without any real explanation. Plus, Jonas doesn't really seem to have any details of what he needs to do. He just seems to somehow know, and he accomplishes all this with the little brass ball thing. And it just seems a bit weak. You're like, really? That's all they needed to do the whole time? Just that? And this is all kind of compounded by the fact that this stuff only comes up in the last episode. 26 episodes, and it took us 18 to find out that there are actually two universes, and a further 7 to find out that this was all just a mistake of another universe that we hadn't even been told about yet, and it's only in the final episode that the protagonist gets given a job to do that can finally put everything right. And by put everything right, they mean erase the existence of the two worlds that we've engaged in thus far. It feels like you've gone to a work meeting that goes for 22 hours, and in the 22nd hour of the meeting, they announced that the reason they called the meeting was to tell everyone that they're fired. Like, they should have told us this earlier. So a couple of days ago, I happened to ring my friend, who is a bigger fan of the series than I ever was, and even he pointed out that there starts to feel like there's more questions than there are answers. And I would agree, except I would say that they're not even well-defined questions. They just sort of have a sitting wondering, wait, so what? And I think the writers like it this way, because the more entangled and confusing it becomes, the less they actually have to answer, answer anything without anyone noticing that none of this really makes any sense. The same friend also pointed out that if there are these two entire realms, two universes, then why is all this confined to Winden? And initially I agreed, but having seen the conclusion, I did think, well, no, it does actually make sense that it's still in Winden, because there are hints to the idea that you can't ever leave Winden. And from that we could extrapolate that 
This may be because there really isn't anything else outside of Winden. These two universes, these realms, only exist in Winden, or Winden only exists within them. Or at least the idea that you can't leave Winden because your future self already exists there. I actually don't mind this, and in fact, from an allegory point of view, I think it's pretty cool. However, there's something I'm not cool with, and let's just take a moment to set the scene here. This series never leaves Germany. It never even leaves Winden. It's deliberately cosy. We see the same locations shot literally dozens of times, many times from exactly the same angle. In terms of setting, I've scarcely seen a more eerily set TV show. I love the concept of Winden. So tell me then, why, O oh Gott i der Himmel, are there a number of songs in English? There were a couple in series one and two, and they shouldn't have been there. They didn't belong. But there are like five or six in this series. It's disgusting. It's an abomination. It doesn't belong. Do they ever, ever speak English in this series? No. Not once. There is a tiny little bit of French at the very beginning of season two, and I think that storyline got rightly shafted. But other than that, the only mention of English that we get is when the guys in the 50s find the jumper that says made in China, and they're like, what is going on? The point being that this thing is out of this world. Hear that? Things that are not in German do not belong in Winden. As the characters would say, das ist nicht richtig. It is unnatural. It is out of place. And this theme of unnaturalness or wrongness is one of the strongest themes from season three. And I feel like every time the characters say, das ist nicht richtig, they're talking to the freaking music supervisor who keeps picking songs in English. Das ist nicht richtig. Now hear me right here. This isn't a purist thing, okay? This isn't like, well, I speak German and it's just a better language in every way. No, I don't speak German. But music is supposed to contribute to the mood of the series and make the viewer feel more involved in what's going on. And it will always, always fail at that if it sounds like it comes from outside of the universe that the series is set in. And no. Just in case you're on your way to destroy me in the comments, it's not a matter of opinion. This series is deliberately confined to a single town in Germany. It's non-international. Song lyrics in English are an incorrect choice. And the reason they made that choice is because it makes them more money. The same way that having a season three makes them more money than not having one. And by the way, I like how the final credits for the final episode, those have lyrics in German. Little bit late for that, you sellouts. So speaking of the final episode, I've already said how Adam, i.e. future Jonas, just somehow seems to suddenly know the answer, like he's gone and gotten a degree from the post-apocalyptic school of theoretical physics or something, and worked out that time stops for a second and somehow this second can be used to get into the sparkly hallway, and from there onto the middle of the road in the rain, because that was definitely the smart way of stopping a car accident. And they do all this, and this means that, think about it, none of this ever happened. Which is an extremely long-winded and convoluted version of that well-known bulletproof way of ending scripts. I woke up and it was all a dream. Okay, so I get that it's not quite the same because the characters in Winden were actually once real and they were suffering this horrible fate as a result of the scientists in the origin world, but for us it essentially amounts to the same thing, which is that everything that you were just witness to, this entire last 26 episodes, none of this ever happens. It has no impact on anything and it never did. This is, by the way, inconsistent with the show's own philosophy that once the future exists, you can't change the events of the past that formed that future. You can't hang yourself in the past if your future self already exists. All right, so why then can you stop the scientist who created your existence from ever doing so. Now, I know it's kind of petty, I don't actually care about accuracy to quantum entanglement or whatever, but I care about writing, and it just seems childish to erase the relevance of your entire script 
and then to have that horrifically cliched moment where it hints that the cycle will actually begin again. Which is kind of like saying, okay, so not only was the whole series pointless, but that conclusion to it was also pointless. A more, I'm going to say, mature way of finishing the series would have led us down that path like we would have been thinking that that's where it was about to go, but then it would have showed Jonas's mum like leaving Winden, you know, doing the only thing that shows definitively that this is over. That would have been the more mature thing to do, but I'm not really surprised that they went for the less mature option. So the plot from Dark 3 is an analogy for the season itself. It never should have existed. It's wrong. It was going to be nigh on impossible to put it right because it came about when someone was being selfish. That is, a Netflix producer tried to do something that should not be done. The scientists tried to manufacture time travel, and the producers tried to manufacture a season 3. Neither of these things should happen. They're unnatural. They're not right. And the best, most complete way to fix season 3 would be to go back to before the car crash of an end to season 2 and stop it from ever happening. So Dark Season 3, it was okay. I didn't hate it, except for the songs in English, they're disgusting. But it's just not the conclusion that season one deserved. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this review, I understand that. But just go back and objectively watch season one. Look at that. And then skip straight to the sparkly hallway scene from this season. And tell me that those things belong together. They don't. So anyway guys, if you've made it this far without wanting to end my life, then there's a chance that you may want to help me to do this more often by supporting me on Patreon, where I upload articles about language learning, and I'm also hoping to get some bonus Reykjavik review stuff up there soon, maybe some extra videos, something like that. If you can't do that, I understand completely, of course. Check out any of the links in the description and leave me a comment. Also, I know we've been massively low on material lately, but don't worry, I'm filming lots today and I've got three more coming at you very soon, so stay tuned for them. Thanks for watching. See ya.